Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The church is sort of tilting a little bit to the left this time. Now, me and Sam Marsh are going to hold that side up pretty good. Uh, did you have a good week this week? In Sunday school today, we had 28. And if you come about an hour earlier, we had about 40 maybe. Uh, we'd love you to come next Sunday earlier and join us for Sunday school. The Sunday school offering was twelve hundred and seventy dollars. And birthdays, we have two and we have two people here. How about that? Uh, Miss Becky and Miss Little Carmack.
you to close your eyes and let's sing that chorus again with no piano. Let's just sing it as a prayer. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Let's close our eyes. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. <laughs> Tell someone you're glad they're here this morning. Glad to see you. You're so good. this morning. Amen? Amen? I like that story. Do you like that story? Yes. The boy said, I'm a big boy now, Mama. <laughs> and how all these kids say, I'm a big boy. <laughs> but Daddy's worried about this. Yes. Even when they're all 42 and almost 40. <laughs> you still worry about them. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but it's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. And, uh, Make one adjustment to the announcements here. So that I think it's will meet this morning. That means business meeting Wednesday night. So be mindful of that as well. Any other need? Look on the bulletin on the second page. Evening service. It says Bible study. Uh, it's been so long since I've done Sunday night. <laughs> I have kind of difficulty doing that. So what I want you to do and, and spend this afternoon thinking about somewhere you would like to go in Bible study. I, I don't want I'm going to do tonight, but uh, just uh, if you have some particular book or some subject, uh, bring that tonight and give me some ideas on where the Lord wants to lead me. You know, God can use other people to give us information as well. Any other thing for us? The prayer list, he notice that uh, there's a lot of prayer needs around. Does anybody know if the little Shaw girl, how she's doing? She's awake. She's awake. She's awake. Her mom sent me a private message and said that she had, she woke up, because they, they backed down the sedation, she woke up long enough to start trying to fight to... <coughs> Try to get out of bed, and so they sedated her back again. But she, they asked her, they, she, they pointed to her mom and said, "Do you know who she is?" And she nodded her head, yes, and then gave the okay sign. So she's still on the vent. That's that's good. Pray that the improvement continues upward. Anything else? Carrie's uncle is going to be there this afternoon, so remember the climber family. Okay. I started this morning to say that everybody, we're going to do a side straddle. You remember when you were in high school you did that? Yeah. I can't do that anymore. Oh, come on, show us No, ma'am. If I do, I'll fall on the floor and take a whole bunch of them and get me up. Uh, so be mindful of that. Let's pray together. If you don't mind, if you don't bother, join hands with people near you. Father, we thank you for your blessings, your goodness. Father, I thank you that you walk with us. You never leave us or forsake us. You're always there for us. And Father, what we need to happen in 2023, we need you to show up and show out. Father, that you might touch our church, our nation, and Father, our world that we live in. Pray your blessings upon each one as we gather together this morning to worship you and praise you, Father, for loving us. Thank you for saving us by your grace, giving us the promise of heaven. And Father, I thank you for that. Thank you, Father, that you're coming back again. And Father, I pray, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sandy, come back. <laughs> And number six.
three verses.
30. Here I am to worship. Dr. A.J. Gordon 
one of the authors I read, wrote this statement. He said, you can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. He, somebody sitting there saying, what in the world did he just get to say? But the statement is very, very true. We must make a priority of prayer in this new year that we're going into. It must be a part of our lives. And God will answer us in mighty ways. In fact, as I shared earlier, I want God to show up and do great and mighty things in this new year. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have a prayer list where you're praying for sick people? Now let me ask you a question. Is God still God even when He doesn't answer your prayer? Sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers. In fact, in life we go running through life and we end up getting in trouble and then we back up and say, I need to pray. Well, you should have prayed before you started going. And, and I'm not taking anything when praying when you do get in trouble. God will deliver you there too. But folks, so many times we forget about God until we are already in a mess. And God wants us to, to praise Him and honor Him for all we do. I've ever read a story about an elderly lady who was sick. And she'd gone to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor and finally the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do. The lady's son said, Mom, I think we need to pray now. And the sick lady responded, has it come to that? Has it come to that? That we need to be much in prayer for our nation, for our country. We need to start with prayer. And we need to remain desperate for God to show up. And when I pause like that, that's a good place to say, that was good what you said, preacher. Amen. Amen. I need Vicky back. Vicky was always a situate by sometimes. So what I want to do this morning is share the subject of prayer, but more important, how do we address God in the needs of our lives so that God answers us in all that we do? Psalm 143, I want to read the first 11 verses. <clears throat> this is the Psalm of David, and let me, let me make this statement. David had a lot of enemies. In fact, you've got enemies. I remember President Harry Truman on one occasion said, if you lined all my enemies up, they would circle the globe a couple of times. We all have enemies. And David had enemies. But David is praying to God Almighty for him to show up in his life. Listen to the first verse. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. In thy faithfulness, answer me. Do you ever want God to answer you? How many of you ever heard the voice of God? I have. There's not a voice maybe that you can hear, but I hear it clearly when God speaks to me. And so David said, Lord, answer me, and in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath prosecuted my soul. He has spent my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness, so those that have been long dead, therefore in my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. <clears throat> have you ever heard somebody say, I wish it was like it was back in the 50s? Folks, let me tell you something. You can't go back and live the old days. But you can make the new days as prosperous as they were back then. If we would do what God wants us to do. So he said, I remember the days old. I meditate on all thy works. What does the word meditate mean? 
you, you roll it around in your mind over and over and over again until you begin to say, yes, that's what that means. <coughs> I meditate on all that works. I muse. I think about the work of thy hands. Is God a good God? Amen. Is God still at work in His world? Amen. Then muse about the works of thy hands. Think about them. Stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. And then it says, Selah. Pause and think. Hear me, listen to what is what David said. He said, hear me speedily. There is an urgency in David's prayer. Lord, I need to hear today what you're going to do in my life. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. <clears throat> For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Think about that word hide as we go through this. I'm going to talk about it in just a few moments. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is what? Good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. I want us to think about four things, four important things in this, these verses. I think there are many more truths here, but there are at least four important elements in this. Let me begin by saying this. When, when we pray, we are dealing with three, three least, at least three different realms in life. First of all, we're dealing with the divine realm. Go to the Lord's Prayer in, Psalm, in Matthew chapter 6. And Jesus has given us an example of what prayer ought to be. And in that prayer, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, <clears throat> God is on his throne. God is in charge. Amen. God's in control. Amen. And so, folks, we can trust in him, but we're bringing the divine realm down to where we are. But we also deal with the daily realm, our daily needs. Give us, forgive us our bread. Forgive us of our trespasses. Lord, get involved in my daily life. My daily needs, my daily wants, my daily desires. Amen? But you also need to stand, you're also dealing with the demonic realm. The devil is real. And he's got a whole of folks helping him. They're called demons. What is the devil doing in this world? He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, destroy. Now folks, the devil's got his, his company that are for him. <coughs> there are those who are lost without Jesus Christ who belong to the devil. But praise the Lord, we don't belong to the devil. Amen. But the devil shows up in church. The devil is more regular in attendance in the church than most Baptists are. Do you believe that? Amen. Now, the devil is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. But folks, he got demons that he sends here and there and younger. <coughs> Last Sunday, the devil showed up in church here at Kirk. You know how I know? Because he, he kept interrupting the service. The devil did not want that train of thought to continue in our lives. So folks, when you come to church, you need to realize, I'm going to have to be dealing with the devil today, but folks, let me tell you something. You're on the winning side. Amen. And you are victorious in him. David's prayer, 
I think it needs at least four, and I want to highlight these four. First of all, he says, Lord, answer me. Look at verse 1 again. Lord, answer me. It is obvious that David is listening to God. Do we listen to God? How many of you... I'm going to stick up... And a stick in the hornet's nest here. How many of us many times pray and we hurry through our prayer and we say amen and we run off to do what we're going to do and we don't take time to say, God, I'm listening to you. God, I'm waiting for your answer. Folks, we're all guilty of doing that. And David is saying, Lord, I want to hear a word from you. I want to hear a word from heaven. David's request for the answer reveals that he is listening and is waiting for God to answer. I read a story the other day about an aging mother whose husband had hearing issues. And the son said to the mother, Mom, Dad, I, Mama, I'm worried about Dad's hearing. Here's her comment. Oh, it doesn't matter. For 40 years he would not listen. And now he can't hear. What's the difference? <laughs> but but Morris has only got these hearing aids that he can turn off. <laughs> and I, I'm sure that sometimes he turns them off. <laughs> <laughs> but folks, my point is this we can be sure that hearing from God is extremely important I hear from God that God has a divine mandate for us when we hear from Him when God speaks to you when God talks to you God has given you something to do for Him in order to hear from Heaven we need to have the proper attitude to hear from Heaven let me suggest four things. Notice David saw, calls the Lord, Lord, in verse 1. Oh, Lord, that is the word Jehovah. That is the word Yahweh. That is God most high. Folks, listen. David doesn't see God as his divine bellhop. He is worshiping as God Almighty of heaven. No one can pray properly who does not know the glory of Almighty God. Put God on display in our life. And all that we do. But I want you to notice something else. David has, has a sense of reality in his life. Folks, you need to understand where you are and what's going on in your life today. What is the reality of the moment? What are the aches and the pains that you have? What is the trouble that is there for you? Understand, in the midst of all the difficulties of life, God wants to show up and do amazing things mighty things in your life. But don't you notice David's desperation? Go to verse 7. He said, Lord, hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. David says, I'm in trouble, Lord. I have enemies all around me. Not only did he have foreign enemies, he had enemies in his own family. He had to fight against Absalom, his son. So, so he said, Lord, show up in my life. Every situation is serious without God. Every situation is serious. But how much more serious it is if God is not there. Amen. So, but when you got God on your side, you got the winning formula. Amen. And God wants to bless us. But notice his expectation. Go to verse 9. David said, Lord, deliver me from mine enemies. I flee to hide in thee. I want you to notice that word hide. It means to shelter, to conceal. David knew his only hope was to be hidden and sheltered from his enemies in the presence of Almighty God. You need to build a shelter where God is. Songwriter penned this line, For I am sheltered 
in the arms of God. What's the name of that song, Sandy? Are we sheltered? Is our safety in Almighty God? The, 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 the idea that is found here in the Hebrew is a I'm going to use, I'm going to use the term in, in the Hebrew is a PL perfect. In other words, David is saying what I'm sharing with you in my life has already <coughs> taken place in the past. It was a settled issue in his life. He wasn't searching for something. It was settled in his life. Have you fled to Jesus? Is it settled? Is He your Lord? Is He your Lord? Amen. 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 Praise God. Secondly, I want you to notice with me. The prayer that we all pray in this new year is, Lord, lead me. Go with me to verse 10. The Lord said that David is praying here, Lord, teach me to do Thy will. We'll come back to that in just a moment. For thou art my God, for thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Lead me. What is God, how does God need to lead us? First of all, he needs to lead us from our ego. How many of you got an ego? All of you do. We, we want to do it our way sometimes. You identify with that? Amen. Amen. David in his life had had many victories. He defeated the baron. He conquered Goliath. He fought Goliath and defeated him. And it would have been easy for David to say, look what I did. But David bows before God and said, God, you are my God. You are on my side. Success can be a danger for a Christian. Let me tell you something. When you are successful in some venture in your life, you better be careful because at that point the devil's going to attack you. And you celebrated that success, the devil's going to show up and bombard you. Always be aware. That no matter how great things are, the devil doesn't want you to celebrate that greatness. David says that he lifts up his hands unto the Lord. I remember reading a story about a Sunday school class. A teacher was teaching them. They were being taught about creation. and So she said to them on one Sunday, said, this week, sometime this week, go out in your yard, backyard, and look up in the sky and count the stars. How many of you remember growing up, you used to, oh, uh, look, I'm sorry, one, two. Well, the, the kids did that. The next Sunday, she was going around the class asking them how many they counted. And one of them all said, I counted 153. Another one said, there was just too many, I couldn't count them. And then there was one little boy who finally spoke up and said, I counted three stars. She said, oh, man, there about to be more stars than that. Surely there's more than the stars. said, no, you don't understand. My yard is small. <laughs> <laughs> How many of us have a small yard? I don't, you know, everything just me, mine, and mine. But folks, listen, God is so great. Amen. God is so good. God is so awesome. Amen. Amen. We need to give Him praise and honor and glory. Lord, lead me from evil. Look at Psalm, the 10th verse in this chapter. He said, Lord, lead me into the land of uprightness. David is crying out to God, deliver him into uprightness, into the righteousness in his life. Only those who pray and pray properly can avoid the tendency to become like your enemies. Well, what makes you mad? 
I'm standing in the line at Walmart. I mean, you, you've got those self-checkout, but I've seen self-checkouts have long lines on them many times. And there's never anybody to help you. I walked all over the store at Walmart trying to find somebody to tell me where to find something. Not you. Not you. And then when, when I find somebody, they, they get on that little thing and say, well, I think it is over there. And we get upset. And we begin to respond like they are responding. Folks, let me tell you something. You are born again, child of God, by the grace of God. You've got to act different than the world. Nobody said amen on that one. <laughs> Don't get mad. Don't get upset. In fact, share with them. God is good. Even though I can't find what I want. <laughs> We've got to bear witness for Jesus Christ in the world in which we live. So deliver us from the evil that is in life. Third thing. We need to pray for it. Verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. The word teach is a Hebrew word meaning to be disciplined and trained. It carries with it the idea of training animals like cattle to be able to follow directions. It is also used in the issue of training troops who must learn discipline and endurance for battle. David is praying for the wisdom and to endure hardship and from it the hopes <laughs> that he has to please God in all things. We need to ask God, Lord, teach me to understand what pleases you. What pleases God? It's a long pause there. What pleases God? David is praying for the wisdom to endure his hardships and to please God. Knowing God's will is not always easy. Let me say it again. Knowing God's will is not always easy. And sometimes it means enduring hardship to endure what God's path is in life. But we need to ask the Lord, teach me to understand what pleases you, but also teach me to undertake what pleases you. It's one thing to know what pleases God. It's another thing to do that which pleases God. Just think of what it needs to accomplish in order to know what to do in life. First of all, we have to follow His will because He's God. We need to follow His will because He is God. Amen. Amen. But there's no question on my part whether I should do this or not. If God said do it, I've got to do it. David is praying for God to lead him onward in the straight path. Notice that word, uprightness. Lord, you put a path in front of me. It's a straight path. Keep me in the middle of that road. Over in Matthew's Gospel, it talks about the men. He said there, there are two ways in life. There's a way of destruction. There is a way of righteousness. What road are you on? You know, I found it very easy to end up in the side ditches of life. How many of you have ever run off the road? Be honest. And you got to get help to get out of that side ditch, don't you? Mm -hmm. But God wants us to stay in the middle of that road to do what He wants us to do. The, the word uprightness here is an idea of an imperfect tense. It is something that in the heart and the mind of God has already been accomplished and God wants to magnify Himself in our lives. Fourthly, God wants us to pray for revival. 
Notice with me verse 11. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. Let me ask you a question. Don't answer out loud, but I just want you to think about it. What is revival? <clears throat> the word revive, the word quicken in this verse has the idea of the breath of God. You remember Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came as a mighty wind and settled on them? God's breath upon us. David spoke of remembering things from the days of old. The older I get, the more that my mind goes back to the olden days. But God wants us to live today. But one problem that we all have in life is forgetfulness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we come accustomed to the mundane, the ordinary. As I said earlier, I want God to show up in 2023 and show off. Amen. Amen. Not the mundane, not the ordinary. God do something awesome in our midst. God will bless us in that. We need to pray for the answers that God has for us. We need to pray that God will lead us. We need to pray that God will teach us. And we need to pray that God will breathe on us and quicken us. William Cowper has written many great hymns and poems. But I want to read in closing this morning this poem from William Cowper. Prayer makes the darkest clouds withdraw. Prayer mounts the ladder Jacob saw. Gives exercise to faith and love. Brings every blessing from above. Restraining prayer will cease to fight. Prayer makes the Christian armor bright. And Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. When we go before God in prayer, Satan doesn't like that. And it makes him tremble. As we enter 2023, those are some of the prayers that we need to pray. And we need to pray, Lord, show up! Show out. And God will do that as we trust Him and bless Him. Let's bow together as we pray together. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for this wonderful prayer of David. Father, teach us how to pray and to make prayer a priority in this new year. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor and glory for your blessings upon us. Father, just lead us in this new year to do that which pleases you and that we might understand fully what you are up to. Thank you, Father, for your grace upon us. Thank you, Father, for this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Miss Sandy is going to come and lead us. 433. 433. You'll take your hymnals and open it. And let's stand together as we sing together.
Say that next verse, Miss Andy. Take it to heart. Ponder over the words, Lord. Pray and do the things that we need to do. We ask that you be with us as we depart and go our separate ways. Just keep each and every one safe. Just be with us the remainder of the day. Be with the ones on our church prayer list, Lord, we, and the ones who have lost loved ones. We just ask that you comfort each and every one. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 Am